my uh, <clears throat> my question was two questions one was there was someone uh, asked about gita learning gita uh, you know what text to use or which books to use and all that i thought in one of our earlier classes when we discussed bhaga we said the gita has to be taught by somebody not to be self learned so that was my comment not a question so that that was i heard uh, Wait, what was the second question the <clears throat> uh, second question was when you know again one of our earlier classes before we got into tattva veda we discussed about you know how like for example if you take a pen or you take in something it is made of plastic plastic is a bunch of molecules molecules are atoms and atoms is protons neutron so in the same way water is not the initial product so to me water is not satya it is the protons and neutrons are the satyams isn't it correct correct so correct exactly exactly so your observation is correct so let me let me answer that <coughs> um second question i'll answer first yeah so that's correct so the water and wave example is given for us to appreciate satyam and mithya so water of course is relatively satyam compared to wave wood is relatively satyam compared to wave and yes you have to analyze it further and take it down all the way to satyam which is atma which is brahma that is the objective but once you are able to recognize that the the wave water relationship then the rest is just straight forward almost i should say perhaps i should say almost straight forward because with the minute you jump once the minute you have appreciated that the wave is mithya then it doesn't take long for you to say water is mithya doesn't take long for you to say hydrogen is mithya oxygen is mithya electron is mithya proton is mithya anything which has a form is mithya correct so therefore electron proton is also mithya no doubt and so that also the existence of the proton proton also depends on something else for its existence and you have to ask what is that something else is there that something else like that we ask yes perfect good observation and the second question is about the bhagavad gita so before i answer that ashutosh very able to uh, um, connect uh, and uh, get some data on that on those books etc uh, no i was looking at the sanskrit teachers first uh, so i have one um, so there were two questions one was sanskrit uh, teachers so i have uh, connected with one of them i'll probably be joining on tuesday night so that's the first thing and uh, bhagavad gita uh, not yet i'm not yet ordered sure not a problem no not a problem that was just by the way just in case so good i'm glad you're yeah. going to start attending a sanskrit class so yeah so you can see based on everything we have studied so far that vedanta is not like any other subject correct vedanta is not like any other subject because in every other subject a new topic is being introduced and unfolded when i take a cooking class cooking lesson i am this guy who knows nothing about cooking and my mother used to ask me to get chana dal from the from the store and i got tor dal so that's how bad i i am and so for this guy to learn cooking it will be it will take a little longer because i have to first i have to identify the difference between jeera and dhaniya first and then only cooking can start and black pepper i don't know the between green dark black pepper and red pepper means we have a big problem so the teacher has to call me separately <laughs> and give a special tutorial for me cooking tutorial special attention i must get so anyway for that everything is new dhaniya show me dhaniya i can see dhaniya and then you show me how to make this particular dish and uh, 
and rasam or sambar or whatever it is i can learn i don't have a confusion about those things okay some confusion i have to clarify suppose i suppose the teacher has to clarify so everything is new anything new i can be confused about what new they are talking about but i don't have a preconceived notion about any particular dish or any particular item i have never cooked and therefore there can be no confusion true with any subject you take but vedanta is so different the job of a vedanta teacher is to take this idea of i that i have and the idea of i have is so clear so crystal clear i am a mortal and i have to make it in this world and i am just subject to so many things so many problems i have to protect myself and i am a ninja i am like this this is my posture i have to protect myself from morning to evening i have to protect myself in this competitive world we have made people like this what to do so this is the idea of i and the shastram has to now say no wait a minute you relax you relax you relax first keep your hands down take it down yeah yeah i know wait wait relax 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 no no i won't do anything to you don't worry don't worry relax relax this is this is what is going on in the vedanta class so we have to ask people to relax and that's why when we ask when we ask for people to invite for the class sometimes we have to ask some basic questions also you know is there a simple interest some 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 uh, curiosity or there is more so when there is more then i don't have to do all these things you know come on relax come on relax i don't have to do that and i can straight away start and i can expect you to pay attention so that's the type of subject this is and an idea of i i have about myself has to be completely negated and the real i has to be revealed and we say that this job a book generally cannot do this job however good the book is because when i'm reading the book i am going to project my idea of i on whatever the book is saying and therefore the book has less chance of identifying what kind of projection you are making and therefore they will say don't study by yourself you go to a teacher that doesn't mean you should not study by yourself you can study by yourself but finally you may have to go to a teacher who can give that upadesha you can get it you can open a book and swami is book and say you can say after 100 pages you say i got it i got it you can walk away nobody can stop you you can walk away that's it i got it so that, that is possible so that's a general advice mahesh ji that you know please don't study by yourself just a general advice otherwise what will happen we one studies one start projecting our own ideas on it and one starts getting all these ideas like like sheet covering and all that look at this one simple topic takes so much to explain and it's so hard to explain in writing all these things and when the wrong idea is there wrong ideas get cemented and then it becomes even more difficult that is why generally those who study by themselves generally i don't say generally they go on a wrong track generally i don't i can't make a very general statement i don't say you should not study by yourself by all means welcome but we have that caution in mind that's all i will say keep that caution in mind when in doubt ask somebody and uh, you can be guided by that that's my suggestion yeah yeah harprasad go ahead yes sir uh you said everything in the world can be categorized into two two ways known and not known no in the known you call it as i and the not known 
as not I. I don't understand that. Yeah. So, so what I said that is one, that is one question. Yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. The second question. The second question is on the avastha treya. No, you said the waking state, sleeping state, and the third one is the deep sleep state. And you call it as a dreamer, dreamer, dreamer state. But I thought it was a dreamless deep sleep state. Okay. It is not a dreamer state, it is dreamless. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and mute yourself. <clears throat> so yeah, second question first. Thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, correct, you're right. It is the three states are uh, waking state, uh, dream state, and dreamless sleep state. Correct, you are correct. So maybe by you know by mistake I may have said dreamer state for a dreamless sleep state, but yeah, you're right. Waking state, dream state, and a state of deep sleep or dreamless sleep state. Correct. So those are the three states. First question was known, unknown, knower. You know, this whole idea we divided everything into two things. What are those two things? We basically said <clears throat> the two things are I and not I. Broadly, I and not I. Then we said this not I is nothing but everything that is known that becomes known to me and then we ask the question hey what about okay comes known to me when something comes known to me to me then i say that that object is known i am the knower i am the knower of the object so there now i have uh, the i is knower the object is known then we ask the question, hey, what about all these things that are that are unknown to me? There are more things unknown to me than more things than things that are known to me. Then we said all those unknown things are all knowable. Potentially you can know them, and therefore they can be put under, under the category of known. Unknown things are put under the category of known in this for in the for the sake of the discussion. And therefore, because that also is going to be an object of you, it is just it just happens to be unknown to you. It can become known to you. Therefore, there is known still, and there is the I, knower, knower and known are the two, or the ways in which we are separating this, this world. Okay, so that is the way we have separated. So there is the known and unknown, which are part of the so-called known, not I, the world. Then there is I, the knower, the Atma. That is the way we have separated two. Is that clear, Harapasaji? So the unknown, no need to be confused by unknown. Known is also part of the known. That's what we say. Perhaps your confusion comes from that. Known when we say known object. And being an object, it is not me. It is not I. It is not the knower. Therefore, there is an object which is known or it can be unknown but will be known in the future. And then there is I, the knower. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, I, I, I will sleep over. I will think about it. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure. That uh, knower is the witness, right? Yeah, knower, witness. In this case, Avstastra Shakshi, the word witness was used. Yes. So go ahead, uh, Hem and Asutosha. Okay, question. In Vishnu Sasanam, the God yeah. is Vishnu Sasanam, one of the attributes of uh, Narayana or Vishnu is. 
he is a witness correct 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 yeah. for him everything is known yeah witness i understand that yeah correct correct so sakshi so for him everything is a correct correct sakshi even this knowledge is known to him sakshi. yeah correct ishwaraha sarvagnyah so so wait so what is your question vegetation so vegetation ji do you have a question uh, this attribute uh, yeah this attribute will it be applicable to vishnu because he is the creator he is the maintainer or he is the destroyer and he is everything is known to him means he is beyond all these things he is beyond all his creations beyond all his uh, powers everything sure okay sure. Mm. So I got a question. I have muted you, <coughs> and uh, so question is about Ishvara, Narayana. We say there is creator, there is so-called resolver, and then there is uh, sustainer, Vishnu, etc. So yeah, so Sarvagnya Ishvara, Sarvagnya, Sarvam Janati, the Sarvagnya, and so. specifically knowing about things that we say ishvara any particular thing i am alpagnya i know i also know a little bit but what i know is so little and ishvara ha sarvagnya ha we say and uh, then we so the upadi when he say narayana the vishesha upadi upadi means we have not used the word yet upadi is like the wave the water has taken on taken on the form of a wave and the wave is called upadhi 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 means something that has a form that has a shape that has some attributes is called upadhi so narayana also is a vishesha upadhi yes the sustainer so when i look at ishvara in that form then yeah sarvagnya sarva shaktiman all that is true and so we will eventually talk about atma atma is sakshi atma is what sakshi and narayana also can be called a sakshi observer of all this and the true nature of narayana and the true nature of the jiva are will be told to be identical will be told to be identical later so yes so narayana is ishvara important all pervasive narayana which is helpful for us to understand atma also which we will see later okay so good question mm. okay. thank you okay so ashutosh yeah sure so my question was around the three states uh, the waking state the uh, the sleeping state and the dreamless deep sleep state uh, how, how uh, did they think about these states when they were writing about it uh, because you can have two additional states which i can think of one is uh, unconsciousness you are unconscious or you are in a coma so so these states are not really covered good so good question so yeah so were they conscious or were they in coma when they wrote all this so yeah so they were very much conscious when they wrote all this <laughs> so what about coma and unconsciousness yeah so you can put it under sushupti you can put it under uh, deep sleep state a state where there is nothing experienced okay suppose i change the word deep sleep into a different suppose we use a different phrase a phrase of non experience but i say that will that cover your coma state and uh, unconscious state if the answer is no think about it think about it if the answer is yes then perhaps we are okay we can cover these states in that experience 
and uh, is it a question of sorry yeah go ahead no no my question was is it is it a question of atma being in control or atma being because it's possible that when you are in coma or when you are unconscious then uh, you are not really being guided by the atma is that right way to think about it or because i that's what that's the reason why i'm having those because it's possible that in deep sleep you may still be guided by that correct good question uh, maybe even when you good question good question so does atma control and guide us that might be a simpler question simple question simpler question so see does water guide the wave i'll ask you this question does wood guide the table or does water guide the wave if you ask the question what can answer can we give water sustains the wave wood sustains the wave every part of the wave is water there is no part of the wave that is water so if you look at it that way the water is free it doesn't in fact the water doesn't decide the shape of the wave water happens to be and the shape of the wave is changing somehow there are factors defining the change of but water is doesn't control anything for the wave <clears throat> same thing with atma atma doesn't control anything if atma decides to control just imagine what can happen then it's going to say it's going to say okay i don't like you to be in coma so i will never put you in coma why should you be in coma if you are in coma i am stuck in your body in this hospital i don't want i want to see the world out there i will drive you around i will use you and drive around i won't do that so atma is going to have all these likes and dislikes and uh, therefore and then it will have doership doership means what means the idea of doing the idea of being the author of something etc all these things will come idea of enjoying enjoyship will be there <coughs> so we say atma does not have kartritvam atma does, that is doership atma does not have bhoktritvam which is enjoyership atma cannot have any of these things so atma is that's why it says sakshi sakshi the shastra uses the word uh, like the light like the light in the dance hall the dancer dances and all the abhinayas are all done all the acts are come done and even after the dance left i mean the the light illuminates the dancer it illuminates the stage and after the dancer left the stage the light continues to illuminate the light is not an actor it is just there and because of that light everything happens we say that light sustains everything like that we say but the light plays no role it is not a controller it is not partial to anything it just observes and yet it sustains us not observing as in i am observing you you are observing me not that kind of observation observing means in its presence everything happens the whole thing shines i am able to think the thoughts are all sustained by that light that prakasha that atma that is how it is so therefore it is not necessary to think that atma is guiding me or controlling me there can be guiding factors and things like that but we don't attribute guidance or controllership to atma okay got it thank you hmm. okay so where, where from this uh... Yeah, one second. Inner consciousness comes. Yeah, Venkatesh Ji. Venkatesh Ji, one second. I have muted uh -huh. you, and uh, let's give the chance to him. Uh -huh. okay. Venkatesh Ji, one yeah. second. Can you mute yourself? Uh -huh. Let's have him talk. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, the first question is uh, when we defined Vijnanamaya Kosha, we said uh, the experience of authorship or doership is Vijnanamaya Kosha. But uh, so how is this different from Ahankara? Because that is, isn't that also, uh, isn't that also the illusion of doership? Good. So that is the first question. The first one. Uh, yeah. 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 So the second question is about uh, the three states of experience. Uh, so what is really the difference between the dreaming state and the awake state from the from the from my perspective, from the perspective of the experiencer? There is not a lot of difference between the two. Right. One, the deep sleep state is where there is nothing. Absolutely. Where the other there is something. So literally it's just binary. Uh, yeah. Correct. Correct. Good questions. Very good questions. So, uh, so first question. <clears throat> so first question is Ahankara. Where does Ahankara come under? Ahankara means this idea of I that is so strong in all of us. And that Ahankara, yes, it comes under Vijnanamaya. Vijnanamaya. Because that ownership, when we said doership, etc., it requires ahankara, even more fundamental than doership. And so, yes, for answer to your first question is ahankara can be put under the bracket of vijnanamaya kosha. Okay. Second question dream versus waking state. What is the difference? It's, it appears to be similar or even same. Well, if you think both are similar, good. Many people think they are not the same. And uh, I have to conduct this class. I can't, I can't miss this class and then tell you, send you an email message. In my dream, I taught you Panchakosha, Atma Panchakosha Titaha. Did you all get it? If I send you that kind of email, immediately you all will unsubscribe and say, please save me. Let me save myself right away before I get trapped further. This is what you will say. So, yeah. So, there is similarity. I am not making fun of you. There is similarity. And yeah, the dissimilarity is so huge. So, the dream is nothing but my projection, a world where I project and I live in this world, in that projected world. In the waking world, I don't project anything. The world is there for me to deal with. And whether I see this world or not, the world is there. The world is operating. Okay. The neighbor is talking whether to the other person, whether I know it or whether I not, whether I see it, know it, not know it, that conversation is happening. The streets are there, people are moving around, and whether I believe it or don't believe it, etc., everything is happening. There is, I have no control over that world. Whereas the dream world is a little different. I don't want to use the word control here. But the dream world is a world that is completely projected by me. And after the dream is over, I completely withdraw it. Completely withdraw it. And I said I didn't want to use the word control because did we decide before creating this world you know, today I've been having all these bad dreams all these couple of days. I would like to have a very sweet dream. So therefore, I'm going to take a vacation to Kutralam Falls, to Brindavan Gardens. I want to go to Austin and see Char Dham. I want to fly to Austin after going to Brindavan Gardens. Take to go to Bangalore Airport, take a flight and go. And then before before sleeping, I think like this so that when I sleep, those thoughts will come out 
and it will take me to all these places. Aisa to nahi hai. So this doesn't happen. So I seem to be helpless and helplessly I am dreaming. And in the dream also, at least can I say I have some free will, like I have free will in the waking state. Do I have free will in the dream? What do you think, him? Do you have free will? No. Uh, not, not, not much, but sometimes when you realize that you are dreaming, then you do. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah. So correct. So there free will is, is free will seems to be absent. And, uh, and uh, so that's why you feel vulnerable sometimes in dream experiences. And the dog is chasing you and you are helpless and you are running and, and uh, the child is crying and you don't seem to know what to do. You are helpless. And so it looks like free will is not, possible, not available there. And uh, so even if so-called free will is available, it's a simulated free will, correct? Simulated free will. It's a virtual free will. Because it's virtual because I can't wake up and tell my children, wait a minute, in my dream I made conflicts for you. Why are you not eating conflicts? I can't say that. I can't say that because that's a dream conflicts. And the son will say, Dad, <laughs> great, thanks for making conflicts for me in the dream. You have that conflicts. I want real conflicts. Please make some breakfast for me. That's what the son will say. You say thank you, Dad, and you just leave us alone. Or else he will say, a smart fellow will say, okay, you go back. We will make our own conflicts. <laughs> Please don't make dream conflicts for us anymore. This is what the son will say. So therefore, the dream and the waking states are uh, different that way because of these, these, these aspects. And uh, so hope that answers your question for now. Hey. Sekhmarji, I remember hearing another uh, definition about uh, dream state that's a, a state where you don't accept any sensory input or process any sensory input. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, that is true because uh, um, suppose, suppose what sensory input? Suppose it's cold outside. In the dream, you can't do, you don't feel the cold, no doubt. But that cold can wake you up. And you say, my God, it's so cold. You turn off the fan, etc. You may put on the blanket. But that happens after you awake, after you wake up. And the cold kind of woke you up, I suppose you can say. Woke you up from the sleep, woke you up from the dream. But yeah, no sensory input. No sensory input. Because senses are shut down. Senses are shut down. They can't, they're not operating. My eyes, my dream eyes, in my dream body, in this dream world, is apparently operating. Because I am seeing people, I am inviting people. I am inviting people to my own dream marriage. And uh, marriage is going on and uh, who music is going on. I am hearing the Nadaswaram music, Shehnai is going on, I am hearing. So dream senses are all working. But that's a dream sense, not the... Not these sense organs. Correct. Good point. Yeah, Mohini, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. I have a question. When you're in dream state, where does the light come from? Your eyes are closed. There's no sun. There's no moon. There's no electricity. But you see very vividly. Where is that light coming from? Because I don't know. What is illuminating the dream? <laughs> Good. I think mean, you are asking um, tougher and tougher questions now. And uh, so, where is the light of the dream coming from? <clears throat> so, tell me a little more about this light. Which light you are referring to? I don't know. I mean, what I feel is like you, your eyes are closed. There's no sensory input. Everything's withdrawn into your manas. And uh, basically, but the pictures are vivid. You see the tiger as it is. I mean, that seeing part is what I'm saying is where does, is that light from? Like, like that, what I'm saying is, it's not darkness, but something you see that, where is that? Because there's no sun. Apparently there's no sun when you have a dream. There's no moon there. There's no stars, nothing that is there to actually show it. Like, you know, but 
where yeah. is that thing like that pictures coming from like and that and yeah. what is lighting that picture like maybe your mind makes it everything is mind made in dream so, but so, that you know, so, no, fundam- so i have a question a fund- more fundamental question for you where did mohini come from in your dream is mohini i don't know it's all dream? mind made even the mohini the subject is made by my mind correct but the light is what i am the illumination is how is that it is so vivid yeah this is this is ishwara vedantins thank ishwara for this dream state you know why because it gives us an example to say just like you created the world in your dream how did you create this world dream world did you decide okay let me call bhagya bhagya come mohini come arapasa ji come let's go out and go out call all these neighbors come hey driver come on drive those cars like in drama you know how we we do dramas skits and let's do all that come on action begin Shh. is this the way the dream world created no that's not the way dream world is just created just like that you think and it is you project it is so in the dream world you are the ishvara you are the lord brahma and you are lord vishnu also because you have to sustain the dream and you also destroy this dream so you are lord shiva also my god we love this example we love the dream state not because dreams are beautiful but we love because we can quote that as an example in vedanta so it's a big topic but yeah so those are the questions we must ask and uh, that's the lila of the dream absolute uh, it's an amazing creation um amazing creation so dream process how it happens and all that i am not an expert in dreams i'm sure there are people who have analyzed the dreams and wrote research papers on dreams and how to actualize dreams and and i you read all these books how to how to have better dreams i'm sure somebody must have written books on that how to how to infer about your future from the dreams you are having you know people of <laughs> i am telling them you keep all those books with you i am struggling to deal with this waking world itself let me first deal with this waking world let me be dharmic let me do a proper job in this waking world then we will figure out if i have time i will come back to the waking world analyze all my dreams i have forgotten all my dreams that's a different thing but even even after minute after the waking up the dreams are forgot i don't know what is this this is ishwara's leela i think so they i think he doesn't want us to remember our dreams i think it's sometimes is a good thing so yeah it's a complicated topic but vedanta doesn't get into all the intricate details of how the dream is created and all that it's not needed for us okay so good question keep thinking uh, mohini ji <laughs> okay so it's already 8:15 8:16 8:16 here we'll stop now any other questions uh, and venkatesh ji next class please go ahead and ask okay yeah okay okay, okay. it's getting late here okay so we will stop with this om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om okay good questions thank you